Hey there, game developers. This is Titan Hex. I'm here with the next leg of our journey, the eventing. Uh, eventing, I consider that to be the intermediate parts of the uh, RPG Maker. There's definitely some far more advanced stuff like uh, programming art. But for the most part, uh, eventing is, is a nice intermediate thing and it can become very advanced if you know how to work the events. And that's what we're going to go into. We're going to start with um, editing, adding some events here. So in order to add an event to a page, we just go to the map editor, which is what we're in. We're in the main screen of the uh, software. And then we're going to pick a map to put an event on. And events are basically things that happen. They're, they're, they're the heart of our game. If you don't know how to event, you won't be able to make a game. So it's important that we know how to event. Um, events are pretty much the, the heart, the gameplay, the, um, the things you interact with, really. They're, they're, they're the things you interact with in your game. And that interactivity is what makes a game a game. So we need to put things that we can interact with. So we're going to start with uh, creating a little tiny city here. Now, in order to get to the event editing mode, you just need to make sure you're, if you're in map editor, uh, the map editing mode right here, you click this for event editing mode. And we can go to mode as well and change it or hit these hotkeys, F5 and F6. So once you're in event editing mode, you're gonna go ahead and double click any square where you wanna put something. So in this case, we wanna put a event here, um, right here. So we're gonna double click on that square and our event editing page is gonna open up, uh, our event editor right here. So this is gonna place all this information onto that square. Now we're gonna go ahead and jump into the event editor. Uh, it can be a little daunting at first it, because it has so much power. Um, and we're going to just simplify it down so that you don't feel intimidated. So the first thing you want is to name the event. Now the naming, naming the event doesn't ever show up for the player. The player probably won't know what the name of the event. There's some plugins that might make use of it, but the event editor itself, um, naming it usually just is for your own uh, knowledge. And there is a search function that helps you search for events, and that can be really useful. Uh, so it's good to name your events. We're going to name this one Island City. We don't need to worry about the note. That's more for plugins. You can add notes if you need to. And then we have the page options right here. So this is the page number right over here. And the new event page uh, creates new pages. And we can click through the pages. And I'll get into what pages do uh, soon. So if I wanted to, I can also copy, paste, delete, clear pages. Uh, I can do all that. If I copy a page, the, ne the page that it creates is going to be one number higher, and it's going to push all the others up a number. So it's going to go from two to three, and then it, what was three is four, four is five, et cetera, et cetera. So just keep that in mind. And it copies all the information right here into the next um, page. So we can never delete below one number. Uh, we can't go below one on the page numbers. So you can't delete event pages after you hit that one. So keep that in mind. Sometimes if you have uh, two pages and you want to move this one to three, you'll have to copy first, then paste, and then delete and then you can switch them up like that. So just keep that in mind. Now we're gonna go ahead and jump into conditions. So the conditions part of the page is, is kind of a conditional branch. Um, we're gonna get into conditional branches on the next tutorial. So we won't go too deep into it here, but conditions are super important. Um, the page with the highest number. So if I had a four different pages, the page with the highest number whose conditions are met is the page that is displayed and used by the game. So if I have something like item, the item potion, uh, this means that the potion item is in your inventory, then this page will uh, be shown. 
So keep that in mind. This is the page that will be dis displayed to the player, and it's also the page that uh, the contents will be kept in. Uh, the, the contents here, this is what we'll execute. So the page with the highest number is going to be the one that you use. Um, a condition is basically uh, a cause and effect. Um, you tell the game what it's looking for, and if it finds it and it's true, then uh, the it's going to consider that page the page that uh, is executing. So if there's a page with a higher number um, that has all its conditions met, that's the page that's going to happen. So just keep that in mind. Switches. Um, and variables, we'll learn those later after conditional branches. And they're very simple. They're super switches and variables. Uh, people think they're complex, but they're actually extremely simple. The thing that makes them complex is that they require conditional branches, which is what we're going to learn next. Um, so once you learn conditional branches, variables and switches are super simple. So next, we're going to go to the self switch. Uh, that is also a switch that uh, works similar to these. We'll go into those when we go into switches. Uh, we'll go into variables later as well. So item and actor. This means that the actor is in the party. And this means that the item, you have that item. And you can have multiple of these selected. So that's, that's kind of the conditions. Uh, it's very important if you have multiple pages. Because if I have none of the conditions are checked here that means it's always true so if i have all of this and then maybe i have actor here this page will never happen because this page is always true and whatever is on the lower number can never uh, occur because this one is always true and it's always higher so this page might as well just be deleted or uh, you need to fix the second page so just keep that in mind page priority is kind of important Next, we have the image box. So you just double click this image box and you will have access to the image that's displayed. Um, so once I pick an image, that's going to be what the player sees on the map. So if I look for, hmm, I don't know if this, there's really not too much to, to worry about right here. So um, these, uh, I'll go into resources later, but just know that the size of the picture isn't going to hurt anything. Um, but here, I'll show you. So I have this big monster here, and it's probably going to take up uh, about this much space. The only thing that I can interact with, though, is this square. So I can walk into this space, and I still won't be considered touching him. But when I try to walk into this space, it'll consider me touching him. And that's going to be important when we go to trigger. But right now, just know that. So I'm going to throw a dragon here. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to throw this. <laughs> Island city. I'm going to change this up to a monster. All right. So then you have autonomous movement. That is how the game... You, you can set up a move route. The object will move around the tiles as it sees fit. So I can do random, and that'll make it so that they walk around randomly. I can do approach where it's always trying to approach the player and I can do custom where it is all we, we set up our own so I can make him run in circles if I go move right move down move left move up so then I can make him run in a circle and if I especially if I have this repeat movements checked it'll just start moving in a circle uh, skip if cannot move means that um, if it can't move it'll do something else it'll it'll go to the next one so it'll go from right and if it can't go down it'll go left whereas it'll wait until it's not being blocked if you uh, check this or keep this unchecked so if we want to keep him just in that circle we want to make sure the skip if cannot be moved is checked so then we go into speed speed is how fast he moves so he might move from this square to this square like this or maybe slower faster so you just have to toggle with this until you see that it's the right setting frequency is how quickly it will move so it, it might move here move really quick over here pause 
then move really quick over here. Or you can make it just one continuous movement where it's just going in a line and then moving. So next we have, uh, that that's your frequency. So at the highest, it'll always move continuously. And at lowest, it'll pause, think for a while, and then move, pause, move, pause, move, and just at, at the lowest. So it's good to keep those in mind. You're more often than not going to use the highest, but you might use uh, a normal when you're doing a random or something like that so that they just look like they're meandering. It's always better to have a custom move route, though. Just keep that in mind. It makes your characters uh, and monsters just move like more smooth. So next we have options. You have walking. Uh, walking means that when they move, their animation for walking is going to happen just like this. Um, if we don't turn walking on, they're just going to move. When they move, it's just going to be like this one. Uh, it's not going to change to any of these. And it's just going to sort of glide and be very like stiff. So stepping means that the character, if you click this and the character isn't moving, It'll just it'll still cycle through this. So stepping means that as the player is sitting or as the event is sitting still, it'll still cycle through these. Next is the direction fix. Direction fix is pretty useful for things like this, where or um, these. Um, trying to find them. Generally, it's things that like especially like this where you don't want it switching uh if if i all right I'll, I'll show you how it works so if i'm a player and i'm approaching and then i try to talk to it from the uh right or yeah from the right side of it it's going to move and face to the right so it's going to turn towards the player and in this case if it turns towards me uh the right one is here so if it turns towards me, it's going to become this monster. And that's definitely not what I want when I hit enter on it. I don't want it to suddenly change. Direction fix makes it so that it can't ever change direction. It's always facing the same direction. Um, so it's super useful for things like this. Doors as well, things like that. Um, but it also makes it so that when I try to move it manually, it'll always face the same direction. So if I have direction fix on and it moves to the right, it'll still face down. And if it moves to the left, still facing the same direction, uh, this, this, this way right here. So keep that in mind. And then through means that I can pass through it uh, and step on it. So if you don't want that, make sure it's not make sure it's uh, unchecked or checked if you want to be able to move on top of something uh, through is the one that you want so priority is where it appears this is mo mostly useful for through but uh, it does work for certain things um, maybe I have a rune that I need to step onto I can click the below characters and then this and whenever I move on top of it um, that's when I can trigger it or I can make it appear above a character, like a chandelier or something like that. Maybe you have a chandelier you want to have fall, things like that. Uh, above character really works well for that. So just make sure you have through checked when it, uh, you have something like this. Generally, when you have these, you're going to have through checked. Uh, there are some that might not, but this is generally a, a rule of thumb. So next, we're going to go put this on same as. All right, and uh, trigger. Trigger is our next one. If we hover our mouse over the trigger, we'll get a bunch of information. I'm gonna go through these with you real quick. So action button means if I approach this and I hit enter or whatever the action button is set to, um, this is all, all, this, all the contents is going to execute. And that's the only time the contents will execute. I have to go up to them and I have to hit enter. Player touch means I actually, it, it, just touching him, just running into him will cause these contents to execute. So all the stuff in the contents will execute if I run into him. Then we have event touch, and that means if the event touches me or I touch it, then 
the contents are going to happen. Whereas player touch means that the player has to touch the event. So this is good for monster encounters, event touches. Player touch is good for uh, doors and things like that. So then we have two other ones called auto run and parallel, and those are pretty similar. So this is what they do. Auto run means that the second I enter the map, um, this the contents here are is going to execute. Same with parallel. The contents will be executing all the time. So the only difference between auto run and parallel is that auto run will be the only, it won't let you move. Auto run will not let you move and it's going to run um, on its own. So auto run means if I have two auto runs, they're going to take turns going. So if I have two auto runs, one's going to have the page with the, the page you made first, the higher uh, ID number or the lower ID number is going to go first. And then the one with the next ID number is going to happen. And that's how auto run takes its turn parallel. It'll always run at the same time as everything else. So it'll just keep running. Um, parallel is good for systems and things like that. Auto run is really good for cutscenes where you don't want the player to move. Uh, stuff like that. So auto run's good for those. Now, if you ever set auto run, you need to have something happen that will change the page. So you need to go to a, um, you need to create another page on anything that you have an auto run and make sure that it, once the auto run is done, it switches using these conditions toward the higher page number once it's done. So keep that in mind. Auto run will, will, hurt your game if you just leave it as is you always want to make sure there's another page and that the there's a condition that's met and that that condition is met somewhere on this page and you'll learn all about conditions soon so don't get too frustrated there but auto run um you just want to keep that in mind when you're doing auto runs parallel uh you don't have to worry about it but if you have too many parallels you might slow down your game so try to avoid making too many parallel uh triggers but for the most part, it's a lot safer. Um, just it's it's also sometimes a good idea to uh, keep in mind that parallel will always loop, which means it'll keep once it hits the bottom of the contents, it's going to go back up and then keep doing it, jump back up to the top and keep doing it. Same with auto run. And that's why we need to make that extra page number. It's just going to keep going and then jump back to the top and keep going. So that's uh, pretty much it for this left side. Next is contents. And if we double click anywhere on the contents, we can create a event uh, command. So the event command can be things like show text. Uh, we can throw some face. This is probably one of the more common ones. So we can make it look like somebody's talking. Um, and then we can have a whole bunch of other things after that. So I could throw in another one like change gold and I can increase the gold by 55. Uh, um, and I can do it so I can change armor and I can increase my shield so I get a shield of 55 gold and this guy says gibberish to me this guy whenever I uh, go up to this and I hit enter that's how it's gonna work so uh, one other thing to keep in mind is that for the action button if it's same as character all I have to do is be facing it and then hit enter whereas if I have it below or above and action triggered um, these contents will not happen unless you are right on top of it. So keep that in mind when setting up your triggers. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, this is the events and all you have to do is just create a nice sequence of events. It'll run through them whenever the trigger is met. And it's, it's real simple, pretty easy. Um, we're going to get into some of the ways to make it more complex in just a moment. Um, once again, conditions and conditional branches will be our next one. And uh, thank you for taking your time on this tutorial. Hopefully it has been useful for you. And as always, like, comment, subscribe. I always appreciate it. Um, start a conversation. Even if I don't reply, hopefully somebody else will. And just tell me a little bit about the game you're making and what you're doing. Um, any tutorials you want to see, things like that. So thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.